All right, so my first question for you is, how do you plan to show so much history about the Sistine Chapel and the time frame that we've been given for two weeks? Well, honestly, I think it's impossible to do that, but I'm just gonna try my best to just compress it in a nutshell. The most important factors, such as the time frame, the type of paint, just the stories that the painting tell, all that good stuff. So we're just gonna try to compress that as best we can. Well, um, I feel like the best way to do that is through what my group is doing and that's writing. Um, just giving people a window into the world of what Michelangelo was thinking and the history and writing to me is the best aspect of doing that, showing basically every detail and aspect of that. Well, I think we've been given a good amount of time in order to get our thoughts together. But my plan is to gather enough information in order to contribute to the article. What are you planning on writing for the Sistine Chapel? Like, what are the main topics you have? Well, I just went over that just now, but just basically the time frame. <laughs> oh, so well, I was thinking. Type of painting, just what the stories that the paintings tell, the Old Testament, just the things that we're doing on the ceiling. We're not doing the whole chapel. So right now we're trying to write about the stories of the Sistine Chapel right now, focusing on stories of like the oracles. Um, right now I'm currently writing about the Libyan um, syllable. Um, I believe I mispronounced that, but um, it's based on um, the woman which Michelangelo actually painted using a masculine figure, and so it's based on um, the forecoming of Jesus. I plan to elaborate on the history in regards to the Sistine Chapel. And so, what do you know so far about the way he painted the roof? I've heard stories about him being on his back. Yeah, so I've heard things that defy that. He I heard that he was in a cramped position, but I think he was still standing. Um, many of those were publicized at first, but um, many people have done um, research and believe that he actually did not do it on his back. He was actually standing up, and that was just a simple quote to uh, many people. What I do know is that he stood in a standing position and worked while looking up. Do you know what kind of paints he used and what kind of painting it is? I know that it's a fresco. Um, it's a fresco, and it was used for fresco paint. I believe he used fresco. Okay. What is your plan to find all the pictures and make sure they are accurate? So at this point we have found the pictures, but what we did to do that was we went on verified sites to find um, the specific images that we needed that were painted at the top of the chapel. And we just got those and started editing them and stuff. Uh, well, at first we just, uh, I looked at the Sistine Chapel alone and tried to single out the pictures that we're using. And um, then I looked up individually the nine pictures that we're using and I conferred and I made sure they were the full picture and not zoomed in. And I printed them, conferred with my teammates and other people, and just made sure they were the right one. Um, well, we tried to find them all from like the same group of photos. So, um, like from the same section. So we just looked up like a list of the photos and found them all in one spot and then printed them all from that one same spot. But some of them were a little different, so um, we did have to find some others from other like, sites yeah. and stuff, but that's... What did you do to make sure all the paintings were printed with the desired colors? So essentially to make sure our um, pictures were with the desired colors, a lot of them were either too bright or too bland and to fix that, I turned up the saturation on those that were not quite so vibrant and on the ones that were too vibrant and too oversaturated, I turned the saturation down in an editing program. With that, uh, we had a, we ran into some issues, but we conferred with the committee, the uh, planning committee, and made sure they liked the colors and made sure that all of the, we uh, had to change the saturation for some of the colors to make sure they matched, especially with the background. Sometimes it'd be too white. And we just had to make sure everything matched so it looked good together. I heard something. Um, yeah, well, um, well, like, Dr. Stewart just, uh, just fixed the printer. He was messing with the uh, blue cartridge, which was, which was my, our main problem. A lot of our blues were coming out purple, so instead of the sky being kind of blue, it was kind of purple. But, uh, now we just fixed the printer, and I think we're going to print them out again for the final time and see how they look. What is your plan for the scaling down of the painting? So what we did, we took pixel measurements of the of the actual Sistine Chapel. The real Sistine Chapel is 40 meters by 14 meters, 
So we did pixel measurements of that and then got the just the nine panels, got that, and we got the, the pixel measurements and then compared it to the one of the actual chapel. So we convert those 40 meters by 14 into pixels and then use the pixels that we got at the inside to get the real measurement of that. But then from there, we have to get the pixel measurements of each frame, each of the nine frames, and then convert those into inches so that it can be used on our roof. How do you plan to make them all look like they are one single picture in a row with no overlap? Well, since we have the dimensions, uh, we can just put it inside the dimensions, and it should fit perfectly, so it fits in nicely. What is your general plan for the mounting of the pictures? Well, the mounting of the pictures, uh, that's really, it's, I mean, that's kind of like an artistic committee thing, but we're, what we're planning on doing is getting the, getting it frame by frame, for, getting it frame by frame for each panel. And then once we're once we're done with the panel, we just put them on on the white background, so it kind of looks like. Because if you look at the actual Sistine Chapel, it kind of has like white backgrounds everywhere. One issue with that is that uh, printers don't use white ink, you know, and so it's gonna it's a, it's a bit difficult replicating that authentic color. Okay, so what we did, well, the, the planning committee gave us the dimensions of how how long the width of each picture should be and they all have a universal length so now all we have to do is uh, uh, put down the, the write down the dimensions on the cardboard and then put the pictures into the dimensions so it fits in I feel like the committees have been doing a great job um, we're on a schedule that we got at the beginning of the project and I feel like both committees well all committees have been doing a great job at staying on task and progressing quickly so yeah what do you think of the project I think it's an interesting project I didn't think I'd ever be doing something like this but I think it's quite fun and because we've broken up the committees it um, is easier Shanna, how have you been contributing to the work along to make sure, like, to, to work with the committees you're in along with making sure everything's done on time? Well, the, by the time I got done with the planning committee, um, the writing and video committees were already, like, had everything in motion, so i just kind of been checking in with those two committees, making sure that everything's good, um, and they have been. The planning committee, uh, what did we do? We, oh, um, did the dimensions, yeah. Um, so all the pictures fit in properly and then we sketch it out and now we're working on printing them. What do you think has been the most fun this week? I think doing the dimensions and working to make sure it all fits together. Alright, Shanna, what have you learned being in this position? Um, probably patience. I mean, you know, it's in the morning, it's early, uh, still waking up I guess. and. Trying to have patience for any sort of inconveniences is always a helpful skill. What do y'all both think of Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel? Um, I th for like the time he painted it and the materials he had, it's pretty impressive that he was able to uh, create the depth and like have paint the columns instead of um, like sculpt them in. So I think it's pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah. Also, given the time, like he really, I don't know, it's, it's a really nice ceiling, and having to work on it. Um, he didn't lay down, but just having to look up for that long and do all those precise details is really impressive and yeah, and it looks great. So. And what do you, last of all, what do you think about Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel? I think that it's amazing. The colors that he used, the amount of detail, I think it's, it's especially impressive that he had no prior knowledge as to painting. He was basically a sculptor before this. I think it's, it's just impressive that the amount of effort he put into this and the time frame. He did this in two years, which is amazing. Well, I think it's pretty awesome. I mean, especially he did it in two years. I feel like artists work on less in two years. Like, like that was that's pretty impressive. And he was he wasn't like super old then either. Like this this wasn't even his like last hurrah. Like it's really like it's pretty notable. I think I think it's really cool. And just like I I, I, I like it a lot. Also, giving the fact he wasn't a painter, he was a sculptor. Yeah, exactly. And then with. Like, like like this building is so awesome for him because not only the Sistine Chapel but like in the same in the same building is the Pieta. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I think it's like a really cool work of art. I mean, like how he draws the pointed arches so it makes it look like there's actually pointed arches. I think it's pretty crazy. So it's really cool. I'm named after him too, Michael. <laughs> Very smart. Thank you, Michael. Um, I believe it's actually one of the most greatest works of art as a whole, showing all of these different pieces 
layered on a roof. It's, it's like nothing I've ever really seen before and seeing it in real life must be one of the best experiences ever. I really can respect the dedication to it that Michelangelo must have had to be able to make not only such great works of art but do it at the uh, roof of a chapel and to be spending all that time, many years, just doing these same paintings in dedication to your religion. It's fascinating and very honorable. I, I think it's unbelievable. It's, it's insane that someone painted that back then, especially where there was a time where it's hard to get to those spaces and um, I think it's a really beautiful thing. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's an amazing piece. I've never seen a piece like that. So to do something like that takes so long. I mean, it took him so many years to make all those detailed pieces. And I mean, he didn't have references for like what they look like because nobody has pictures of all those people. So he had to like make them up and just make them like look appealing to the like Pope Church, uh, like all of like all the people. I think the chapel is very beautiful and spiritual. I like the use of the colors and texture and its form of value. Thank you, Nisha. Thank you.